Hey everybody, it's Monday and I don't know about you, it was a bit of a weird weekend for me. No, you're not imagining that my makeup looks weird. I was shooting boss fight footage over the weekend. I'm doing all the exteriors I need um, so that I can do it before the weather changes. It actually ended up looking really pretty with like a few red leaves on the ground. Um, Princess Sparkle Muffin is getting a uh, mist homage built into her story for boss fight. So it's coming along. I got some writing done. Um, wrote a Beelzebub scene. So that's always, that's always exciting. If you want more details on boss fight before anybody else gets them or any other behind the scenes stuff, I got a show coming up in, I think it's Collingwood on the 12th. I'm not sure. I can't keep track of this stuff because most of you guys are not up here so you're not able to come to my live comedy shows, but um, you know what's coming. Patreon, Patreon, you should become a member. Patreon, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Because um, I don't know what's gonna happen with this. I mean, this is a, it's weird, right? YouTube is weird because this story is all over the news. What went on with the, um, first weekend Joker screenings and the up, the ramped up security. Um, but it's still very possible that YouTube is going to demonetize it because it may corrupt young minds. And um, this sort of dovetails in before I get into that with something I really struggled with over the weekend and, you know, how unpopular it usually ends up being to be a person who has an ethical and moral code and sticks to it. And uh, many of you may know we have an election coming up here in Canada. We're in that like last two week phase. And if if for people who don't know anything about Canadian elections, we don't have the long, prolonged pre-election period with primaries and all that stuff. Um, we have like five weeks of craziness. It's called, you know, when the writ drops, dissolving parliament and opening up the election period, that's something else that doesn't happen in America, that um, the, the, you know, the, the civil service continues. There aren't government shutdowns up here like there are in, um, in the U.S. But the business of legislating stops because our, our, our head of state is still technically the queen of England. We're part of the Commonwealth. And so it basically dissolves parliament and there's five weeks of craziness. And because we're going into the the home stretch, I think the election's on like October 21st, um, this is when people start to lose their freaking minds. And like three different people just went over the line on me for different reasons. Not, not even like direct election related issues, uh, just stuff that has a political charge. And I may talk about that stuff, some of that stuff throughout the week. I may not. Uh, I want to talk about this Joker movie controversy because I actually think it's interesting. I think it's a real sign of the times um, that, that this sort of stuff is, is major news this way. I found out about it. I just have... Um, uh, NBC News on in the background, like MSNBC or, or some kind of, you know, NBC app or something like that running in the background. So I can kind of keep touch with what uh, what's going on, at least in America. I tried watching BBC to uh, get uh, more of a global standpoint, but I just find BBC World so boring. And CBC News tries to copy BBC, so it's just like, I can't be put to sleep while I'm trying to work. Um, but all this is, is a long way of talking about the fact that when you're in the media, like me, and when you are, um, you wear many hats, um, you know, I do comedy, I do hard news, I do political podcasting, for as long as that lasts, it's insane. Um, but, uh, you know, media responsibility is something that's extremely important to me. And the separation in media between 
stuff that is fantasy, stuff that is clearly, you know, quote unquote, not real and stuff that um, is supposed to be news, is supposed to be fact based reporting. And unfortunately, we live in an age right now where the news, you hear people talking about the narrative on news all the time these days. And that drives me crazy. The narrative on facts. There wasn't supposed to be a narrative in news before news became incredibly partisan. And um, the... Um, so you hear about the narrative on news. and But then fictional works of art are supposed to somehow fill in the gap of morality in an age where people don't either trust the news or people only watch news with a incredibly intense partisan spin that they agree with. And we, I really do believe we have gone past um, an era of different opinions on the facts. I really do believe that we are in an age where people deal with completely different sets of facts. One of the weird things that happened to me over the weekend um, was someone was going in like the, the, the chat uh, for the, the political podcasting that we had to shut down because of crap like this. Um, going on about a, a, a news story. And I'm not going to get into the details of it because that'll take too long. But they mentioned a theory they had about the story. And I said, has that, have these details been confirmed? And, you know, because I haven't seen any reporting on that part. And I swear to God, this guy said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether or not we are working on a, cons on a confirmed set of facts. That did not matter in the mind of this person who cares a lot about um, world affairs and, and, and politics and stuff like that. And I was just like, yes, it does matter. And this sparked off a whole big thing and um, I was stunned. I was stunned that somebody who, who is participating in, you know, fact-based programming would say confirmation of facts does not matter. But this is the world we live in. This is the hyper-partisan reality we live in. And I keep taking it on the chin because I believe in facts. And if, you know, granted, we are going based on the best that we know. And science is constantly testing and replicating and stuff like that. And so when, when various scientific communities discover that there has been a problem in their research, they do better research and, uh, and amend that. You know, working on the first episode of Boss Fight, I've been reading up on addiction and, and, and consulting with some experts in, in the field of psychology. And that alone, how we see addiction, the evolution from seeing it as a moral failing to uh, an illness, a health issue, and that, you know, certain substances are, are more addictive than others and why that is and certain people are more prone to addictive tendencies and why that is. And it, it has to do with, um, you know, dopamine receptors in the brain and the amygdala dala and, and stuff like that. Um, and it's really fascinating. I mean, I'm, I have too few dopamine receptors. I, so I'm resistant to things like morphine. It sucks. Let me tell you. But, um, so, you know, that I don't get those huge rushes from substances that other people do. I can't relate to that. And maybe, I don't know, maybe this is why I don't understand these um, 
big rushes of emotion that override the intellect on certain things. Obviously, I have a lot of feeling. Like you guys have, who have who have you know watched my content know, emotions are very important to me. People feeling hurt is very important to me. But that's not the same as being overwhelmed by an emotional rush. And there seems to be too much of that going on in the discourse right now. Now, how does this get to the Joker? Well, I was floored when I saw this story over the weekend. And I realized in retrospect, you know, because you think I probably shouldn't be. But I was still very surprised at at this particular story. Sorry, I realized I was looking the wrong way on that video. So security stepped up as Joker opens in U.S. movie theaters. Now, depending on the version of the story you look at, I took one from Reuters because it didn't have giant ads ruining the ability to read it. But police in major U.S. cities were on alert on Thursday as Joker opened in movie theaters after weeks of publicity surrounding its disturbing portrait of a bullied loner raised fears it might spark violence. Now, just so you guys know, this movie screened at the Toronto International Film Festival. There was a lot of buzz about it, but no one got hurt. Like, so just just so you're aware, it's not like no one had ever seen the movie. Um, you know, Joaquin Phoenix... Reviewers are calling it a brilliant but terrifying performance as a mentally unhinged outcast who unwittingly finds fame through an act of violence. It's apparently very, very inspired by Taxi Driver, which um, is now considered an old movie. Um, and depending on, and this is when things start to get weird, um, depending on who you ask, there's different le levels of credibility in these threats. Um, originally, it started as a an FBI bulletin. Um, FBI? Yes. FBI and Department of Homeland Security issued a warning to local law enforcement because of online threats posted online um, about the movie. Now, they mentioned the online threats but said they had no specific or credible threats to particular locations or venues. And this is the stuff that sucks about policing in the modern age is they ignore one of those online things at their peril, but at the same time, it's really hard to run every single one down, right? Um, of course, the, the heightened fears about this particular movie were because of the uh, the Aurora movie theater shootings in Aurora, Colorado, where, you know, it was a Batman movie. And this is where the sort of emotion over reason tie-in came into it, that all of a sudden Batman movies are some sort of high-risk activity. Um... And so cops had to be on heightened alert. Movie theaters had to get uh, extra security. Uh, one movie theater in, it was somewhere in California, Huntington Beach, California. Um, there was apparently a specific credible threat made to a, a theater in Huntington Beach, which is outside of Los Angeles. Um, so... Um, it's now again the police aren't saying I was just checking that for a moment because I want to get my facts right the police weren't saying that um it was specifically related to this movie just that it involved a movie theater um and this is what I mean by emotion the fact that this has become such an issue um based on a a comic book character that is far from new his incredibly violent tendencies if you read any of the comic books are far from new um i mean god going back to uh was it grant morrison who wrote arkham asylum the joker's been a really sick so-and-so um the whole you know um batgirl oracle thing with the killing joke 
the Joker's been hardcore for a while now. He's not the goofy guy that, you know, our parents might remember from that 60s TV show with Adam West. Um, the Joker is quite scary. Um, but they went so far as, as you see here, costume and face masks have been banned from moviegoers at two U.S. theater chains, AMC and Landmark, while the Alamo Drafthouse Cinema Group warned parents not to bring their children, probably because the movie was... The movie was disturbing. I think that's sort of a, a false comparison right there. The Parents Television Council and Media Watchdog, oh boy, issued a similar warning on Thursday. Parents may believe that this film is appropriate for kids given it is an extension of the popular Batman franchise. Um, it just seeing anything about the movie, you'd know that this is not a kid's movie. I mean, do people just go into the movie? Hey, it's a movie about the Joker. I, the last three Batman movies were not even something I'd be comfortable taking a young kid to. I mean, it's got a, an R rating. How much more do you need to know? It, this is, this is when I start going, this, this is a level of pearl clutching. And so of course, the press has been on Warner Brothers, uh, the studio behind the movie, um, about, you know, is this an endorsement of real world violence? Because the movie, I haven't seen it yet. I have no one to go with. Um, so I guess I'll wait until it's on like pay-per-view or something like that. But um, it it's not an endorsement of violence. You're not really cheering for him, but... There is a degree of empathy with the main character because he's the main character. And my thought, oh, how shocking. Um, a complex portrayal of someone who does bad things, you know, a bad person as a person instead of just some monster that we can just turn away from and, and, and refuse to see as a human being. Wow, what, what a horrible corruption of humanity. Now, you'll note my sarcasm because, I mean, I'm old enough to, uh, you know, remember like the, those movies in the 70s where they did stuff like this. You know, the anti-hero was big in comics is big. I mean, Punisher comics going back a really long time. Um, but, uh, you know, then things like Catcher in the Rye, which got banned because of a connection to a shooting and stuff like that. Now, remember as a kid, eventually, well, not as a kid, as like a teenager, younger side of teenager, reading that book and thinking, this is it. This was something that was going to pollute my mind. I don't get it. I, I was given access to far more um, disturbing books and no one blinked before I read that and I was like of all the books to ban you ban this one just because people go into this emotionally driven cover your ass mode when when horrible things happen and um you know it's gonna make 80 million dollars which is great for an October release um but Warner's had to issue a statement saying it is not the intention of the film the filmmakers of the studio to hold this character up as a hero uh, the director, Todd Phillips, criticized people who have attacked the film without seeing it. He said, I didn't imagine this level of discourse that it's reached in the world, honestly. I think it's okay that it sparks conversations and there are debates around it. The film is the statement and it's great to talk about it, but it's much more helpful if you've seen it. And that just made me laugh because it's like, my God, the guy who is the biggest adult about this stuff is the guy that used to make the Hangover movies until apparently the the whole outrage culture got so ridiculous that he's like, you can't do comedy anymore. So this is what he did instead. If, if you ever needed proof that a lot of comedians, like people who do comedy, are very, very dark people, here's an example. But it, it, that, that's an interesting thing, right? Like, I... Don't, on one level, I completely get this. But I don't get it, if that makes any sense, right? Like, rationally, like, intellectually, I get that it's like, yeah, they're just covering their ass. Yeah, if anything happens, they want to say they did everything they could. Yeah, it's just an overabundance of caution. And based on what's been going on lately, 
you can't blame them. Um, on the other side, I'm like, really? Really? I mean, why would people take their their little darlings to a movie that's about the bad guy anyway? They're too young for that. This is a movie about, it's not even an anti-hero. He's a villain. It's a movie about a bad person, right? Like, you should know this. It's it's not, I don't know what they think they're getting, that they're taking kids, but there you go. Um, but it's kind of weird that there are certain things depicted in art that um, we see as okay that it's fake. You know, people didn't get worried that kids would try to breathe underwater after seeing Aquaman. You know, people didn't worry that angry young men would try to talk to fish to hope that Amber Heard would come out and fall in love with them. Um, but then, the, you know, the over-the-top violence that is a part of these movies, that that is something that, for whatever reason, people think uniquely people want to emulate. And, like, personally, I prefer violence in a movie when it's brutal instead of that cartoon violence where, you know, you punch someone and they just fall down and all that stuff. I, I think it's much better to show cause and effect. And if you don't want your hero to be brutal, maybe he should solve problems or she should solve problems with something other than their fists. That's something that, um, you know, I, I think the... The, the new Spider-Man movies kind of thread that needle nicely that the, you know, uh, Spidey does do, do some hand-to-hand -hand combat, but it's, it's usually like, I mean, that scene in, in um, uh, Far From Home where it's all like the, the drones and all that stuff and he's jumping through all of them. That, that's one of the most, pardon the pun, spectacular cinematic Spider-Man series um i've seen in a really long time and that alliteration would make stan lee proud um spectacular cinematic spider-man series yeah there you go all the vowel all the consonants um but there's one further thing that just made this thing go b as far as i'm concerned and this is where i want to land um the the um FBI bulletin managed to bring in incels to this through the online threats. And apparently a subset of incels called clown cells. I'm not kidding. This is a thing. I don't understand how this is connected to the Joker because, you know, Harley Quinn, he had a girlfriend, didn't seem terribly interested in her, but she was there. Um... But, uh, you know, they, there's these boogeymen in our society, right? And all it takes is a few of certain types of people to make people afraid of every one of those people. And the thing is, the more you become afraid of a certain type of people, the more you infuse them with a certain amount of power. And I'm not suggesting that people go out and, you know, take stupid risks or, or don't, you know, mind your own safety. But I am concerned that some of the targeting of these internet groups and this is why I decided to do Boss Fight, which is, you know, a show about myths and gaming. It all goes full circle, see? Um, but the, the targeting of some of these unfair uh, online groups because of the actions of a few of their members is actually going to drive the, the anger, the sense of unfairness, the sense of feeling left behind that a lot of people are feeling and it's it's going to drive it further and further and further down so people just go crazy on the internet and don't speak out in the real world so they don't make any meaningful connections they don't um you know they don't 
they don't give themselves chances to be validated as people because they're keeping it all inside. Because they see all these these indications that they're going to be rejected, that they're going to be judged. Um, and, you know, it's it's there are certain groups that the media immediately goes, oh, no, no. Just because some of those people killed a bunch of people doesn't mean all of those people are killers. And others no, they're fine to 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 demonize them. And. You know, if the Joker movie resonates with some people, it's going to resonate with those people that can only get attention negatively. In, instead of setting an example of empathy, if we hold a group up to be the, the subject of hatred and fear, at least they matter. That's what's so messed up in our world right now. Because communities got so big that we stopped having real communities. And so instead of that, you know, core social group of, you know, under a dozen people that, that you associated with a lot and you formed close bonds with, people have these very superficial relationships with a lot of people. And they think they feel this sense of superficial safety and that no one knows me, so no one can hurt me. But people can't live that way. People have to be seen. People have to be validated. That connection, going back to the whole dopamine thing, that's that's one of those things our brains are um, designed to reward. Meaningful social interactions. Same thing as like exercise. It's, it's designed to reward. Um, even though I still hate exercising, I do it because it's good for me. But... Um, I, I really don't think that demonizing any group as a whole solves the issue. Because, you know, well, obviously there have to be limits with things. You know, obviously um, we judge. That's why we have judgment. And people have the absolute right to to filter out or not tolerate anything they find incredibly disturbing i'm a big advocate for that within reason um i think there's a big difference between saying um these are not people i choose to associate with i don't support their values i don't agree with what they do i even dislike what they do and going, those people aren't people. Those people don't matter as people. They're not people. We've unhumaned them. And it, it's funny in all this talk of privilege theory and, and all that, you know, postmodern mumbo jumbo, um, like unhumaning is actually what happens, right? That person's not human. That means we can do anything we want and it's okay. We don't have to feel bad that we're hurting a person. We don't have to worry about what we're doing to them because they're not a human anymore. They're a, uh, you know, label of the month. You can't do that to people in society and expect good results. You always have to leave the door open that if a person gets it together and turns it around, there will be positive consequences for that turnaround. Because if there aren't, if a person just, that's it, I screwed up my life, there's nothing I can do, that's when they start feeling hopeless. That's when the bad stuff starts happening. And obviously everybody is responsible for their own moral choices. But I think that, I shouldn't say but, people are responsible for their own moral choices. And, you know, like that woman who happened to be a cop who walked into a guy's house and shot him dead in his house because she thought that it was her house. She is responsible for that. She did that. And I'm okay with her going to jail, you know? Um, I'm sure she feels like it's terribly unfair and oh, poor her. But we live in a society where you can't just do that, right? There, there has to be someone says no. People have to be able to be in their own house and not get shot by somebody coming in thinking it's their house. The Castle Doctrine can't apply to that. Um... But that doesn't mean we have to see 
people that do things like that as not people. I think it's much more um, productive to go, they made a, a huge mistake. There were terrible consequences. If they do their time and they rehabilitate, that is the way the system is supposed to work. That's how I look at things, right? It's much harder when you're, you're directly connected to it. Trust me, I know. Unfortunately, I've lost people to violence. Um, but we do have to, each of us, not let those powerful emotions, again, going back to something I mentioned earlier, override our decision-making because if we're all just emotioning all over the place, if we all feel so small that we have to scream and scream and scream and scream to feel heard, the world's going to look very dystopian. The world's going to seem very scary. The only way to make it less scary is to form those connections and treat people like people, even if you don't like them, even if you can't stand them. That makes sense? Hope it makes sense, because that was a lot to pack into one video. Like I said, it's been a very weird weekend. Help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Gianna K. Patreon, Patreon, you should become a member. Patreon, thanks for watching.